So that the unhappiness is really when we're in a state of ignorance or confusion, and that that ignorance is covering up our basic nature in a way that we're not able to connect with it, we're not able to understand it, and so that results in unhappiness and more confusion. So that is what you're saying, that the fundamental requirement to ensure happiness <coughs> is to ensure right understanding. And to ensure right understanding, the fundamental thing is to start accessing our natural acceptance. That is the first part of this self-verification. So if you start paying attention to it, if you start accessing this natural acceptance, then we will be able to line up our own, own way of thinking, you know, our desire, thought, expectation on the basis of this. If we do that, we will be in a state of happiness, in a state of harmony and happiness. Because we have not done this, and most of our desire, thought and expectations are decided by our preconditionings prevailing in the society. That is what is causing unhappiness, if it is not in line with natural acceptance. So we will get into more details about that. You know, when we talk about the self, you will see your desire, thought and expectations, you know, are they coming from your natural acceptance? or they are coming from your preconditioning or from sensation. So these desires, thoughts and expectations which are coming either from preconditioning or sensation, you cannot be sure whether it is in accordance with your natural acceptance or not. Therefore, you cannot be sure whether it will lead to happiness or unhappiness. That we will investigate further, you know, when we talk about this self in more detail. Yeah. Um, you say that uh, the natural acceptance is universal, intact and invariant for all people or all individuals. But say for example if there is a psychopath or a sociopath who derives uh, pleasure or happiness from killing a person, then I think that would be not naturally acceptable to me or any other person. So how can you say that uh, the natural acceptance is same for all individuals? I think we'll have to talk to that psychopath. <laughs> For example, these hundred people sitting here. Okay. Of these hundred people, at least we can investigate and find out. Okay. And the condition is not very different, you know. People who are inside here and outside. So all these psychopaths. It's just the matter of degree. So I was talking about this definition of mad yesterday. If you take the definition of mad in that strict sense, okay, we can find out our state. So the difference is not very much you know, in terms of quality. It is in terms of the degree. So. All these psychopaths, it is only that they have crossed certain, you know, degree. Otherwise, what is the status of our, our conduct? Is it certain, uncertain? Uncertain. <laughs> only thing is that their degree is little more uncertain. <laughs> Ours. So, not very different. If you try to, you know, look into these people who are, you know, who appears to be so willing to kill others, okay. if you ask these people what is their natural acceptance, to be fulfilling a relationship, right, or to be denying others, they will accept that they want to be in relationship and fulfilling a relationship, but they have a hundred reasons to do this. So, they are doing. so we will have to find out their natural acceptance. As I mentioned, we tried with people who had committed three to five murders and were inside the jail. Okay, their natural acceptance was same as mine. And once this attention was drawn to them, you know, about their natural acceptance, there was a significant change in their behavior, more than the behavior of the collector. <laughs> I 
I'll just I'll give you an example. One of these people who were there in this uh, group of these uh, convicts, you know, his name was Ganesh Ram. So every day evening we used to share, you know, their experiences to what had happened and all this. Fifth day he said, when we are talking about relationship, somehow I realized the importance of it. And one very noticeable change in my behavior today morning was that previously when I used to go, to go to collect water, so they have one tap, from there they have to go and collect water. <laughs> so, generally my mode was, you know, to take water was that I go with the, you know, my bucket, rotating like this, and there is a long queue. So I will go rotating like this and put my bucket in the first. You know. <laughs> and if anybody comes in between, it is his problem. If he gets hurt, you know, it is his problem. <laughs> that was my, you know, regular way of doing it. And this has caused me a lot of problem because if somebody gets hurt and there is a complaint and this fellow will be taken to octagon, right? <laughs> now when he could see that this relationship is what is naturally acceptable to him and he wants to be in relationship, he said, morning, this morning when I went, I kept my bucket the last in the queue. So people were saying, no, no, take it. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, no, it is fine. <laughs> so somebody said, you will get delayed, you know. He said, no, no, no problem, I'll talk to you. you know? Because that is also important, you know. Talking to people is also important. It is not wastage of time. Right? So that's the change. Takes place in a person who is, you know, who thinks that it is right to, you know, for him to take his bucket, you know, rotating in the air, and if anybody comes in between, it is his problem, right? <laughs> no fault of mine, because that's the way I do it. <coughs> so all these psychopaths, so-called psychopaths, like us, you know, like I and you, okay, only thing is, the degree has gone to you. <laughs> So we'll see slowly, you know. I mean, as I'm saying, you no, know, this is just the beginning of the exploration. Okay. You have to start exploring yourself. Then we can also explore all these people. <laughs> <laughs> the definition of big personality and the schizophrenia, you know. Yesterday, it was a soft copy, not now available. <laughs> so, you could see that is the personality, that is of any, you know, in nature. Is it there in us, not there in us? Degree, less or more? <laughs> yeah, let's see who may see. The process of self-verification, uh, I as an individual, always grade myself higher than the others. <laughs> so I as an individual always grade uh, much higher than the others and better than the others. Uh, now when you see the P1 and P2, uh, verifying whatever we do uh, based on our natural acceptance. You know, I think this is you know, much easier. But when it comes to the P2, living accordingly. I see there's a big, you know, a gap between P1 and P2. Uh, you know the formula of necessary and testy to be intolerable. I'm having some talk and putting a lot of things into this particular formula, necessary and testy. I am finding, you know, most of the things are getting intolerable now. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, wh what I say, like, uh, living with ourselves and living with the other human beings, it really becomes difficult, it really will become difficult when there's a big difference between what I say and how do I do. And uh, 
I say, like, this is naturally happens everywhere. What we say is very different than what we do. No, what do we do? Uh, just for the sake of understanding, I'll put it into a very small example, like, uh, let's say necessary and testing. So if I keep talking on, uh, let's say, non-violence, you know, it's a very necessary and it's a testy thing. Uh, unnecessary and testy, like, while talking on, on the non-violence, I just drop down myself into a mid -shot. So it becomes unnecessary and testy. Unnecessary and testless, I'm still talking on the non-violence, but cooking the myth and buying the myth. And it really becomes intolerable. My hands and mouth are busy eating chicken, and I'm talking about the non-violence. And that's what, you know, I see it generally happens, because what we say is really very different than what we do. And that is causing a lot of disharmony and leading to the uh, state of unhappiness. So, how we can ensure, uh, you know, the, the similarity between what we say and what we do, uh, just to get into the state of harmony, which will lead to the happiness not only to myself, but even people around me. See, this is very simple. No. No. If you have understood, okay, you will do it. If you are not doing it, you have not understood. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Just to take an example, that if I have understood that this is the door, <laughs> then will I pass through the do door or I will try passing through the wall? <laughs> If I am trying to pass through the wall, it only means that I have not understood where the door is. <laughs> you can't say that, you know, I know the door is here, but you know, I have the practice of passing through the wall. <laughs> and therefore I am doing it. Right? So all this, you know, is because we are not understood. Anything that you do, you do under the assumption that it is right. Otherwise, you cannot do it. It is very simple. Anything that we do, whatever whole lot of calculation that you do before deciding what to do, right, at the end of your calculation, right, you think that is right to do. So, you have, if you look into yourself, you slowly will do that. There are so many contradictory thoughts desires that you have, and you don't even know about them, they are not aware, they are not aware of it. But when you are deciding on something, all these contradictory thoughts are there, right? and on the basis of all this together, you are deciding what to do. So on the one hand, you have one, you know, the conditioning that you should not overeat, you know, or you should eat for nurturing the body. On the other hand, you also have another belief that you have to make yourself happy. And it is the test which will make you happy. So this is also there and that nurturing the body is also there. So when there is a food in front of you and it is tasty, right, then one line of thought says, don't eat more, you know, because your stomach is full and it will now to over it to be harming your body. Right? The other set of thoughts is saying, go ahead, you know, after all you have to have happiness. And this food is tasty, why not have a little more? And with all this going on here and there, and finally you decide to have more. Now then you later you say, you know, I didn't want to have more, you know, but you know, it was so tempting. But who decided for it? <laughs> All this has to be, you know, investigated properly. <coughs> right? So if I am not doing it, I have not understood it. If I have understood it, I have no option but to do it. So if I know where the door is, I will pass through the door. 
If I don't know where the door is, and I think there is a door in this wall, and I try to pass through the wall. I cannot say that I know that the door is there, you know, but sometimes I pass through the wall. <laughs> so, we have to be very, you know, kind of critical about our own self. Start looking into it. And I'm not blaming, I'm not saying that you are trying to, you know, manipulate things. What is happening is that that is the way you are, you know, looking at things. That is the way your desire, thoughts and selections are and you don't know what about you, know about them. In fact, most of us are not even conscious of what is there inside us. Whole lot of combinations, you know, collection of desire, thoughts and expectations have taken place. And we are not aware of it. So you have to start becoming aware of ourselves one, you know, slowly. Okay. So with this, let me uh, sum up you know, briefly what we have been talking about and then proceed our discussion. So three points we have made yesterday. One is trying to see whether physical facility is enough for human being or we need to have right understanding and right feeling in relationship along with physical facility. This was one important question we held upon. And the conclusion was that if we are only living with physical facility, it is not enough for human beings. <coughs> and we cannot ensure continuity of happiness out of this physical facility alone. If we want to be satisfied as human beings, satisfy our basic requirement of happiness and prosperity in the continuity of the two, what we need to do is to ensure right understanding in the self, relationship with other human beings, and physical facility with rest of Therefore, all three of them are required. So, if you are living only with physical facility, you call it living with animal consciousness. If you are living with all three of them, you know, ensuring happiness and prosperity for ourselves and for others, then we are living with human consciousness. And this transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness is what is defined as progress as development. And it is essential for all of us. Right? And also we said that the role of education is essentially to ensure you know, this transformation or enable this transformation. So this was the first point we made right? today. Then we said that in order to make sure of this, okay, what we need to do is to explore within our own self. So we'll go through this process of self-exploration. Regarding the process of self-exploration, he said, we will have to identify the content and the process of self-exploration. That is what we did. So if you look at the content of self-exploration, we are trying to explore into two things. One is the desire of a human being, and then the program of action to ensure the fulfillment of this desire. So that is one thing we decided. Then for the process of self-exploration, he said, we will take everything as proposal not assuming it to be true, we will pass it through our self-verification on our own life. And this self-verification will have two parts. One is verifying on the basis of our natural acceptance. And second, verifying it on the basis of living according to it. So through this process of self-verification, we will decide what is right for us, what is not right for us. And we will apply this to begin with, with this, to find out the desire of the program. So this was the second point we made. Then we said that if we look into the desire of human being, it turns out to be happiness, prosperity and continuity of the two. So in order to find out, you know, the program of action to ensure continuity of happiness, you first need to understand what happiness is. In that sense, we have defined happiness. So, happiness, if you look at the definition of it, we said, the state or situation that I live in, if there is harmony, if there is synergy in it, then it is naturally acceptable to me to be in that state or situation. So, to be in a state of natural acceptance is happiness. And that is what we concluded saying, that to be in a state of harmony is happiness. And 
Contrary to this, to be forced to be in a state of disharmony is unhappiness. State of contradiction is unhappiness. So this was the definition of happiness and unhappiness here made. And then we said that if we look at our states or situations that we live in, we can identify it starting from individual to family to society, nature and existence. So these are the levels of our being. And therefore, if I have to ensure continuity of happiness, I have to ensure living in <coughs> harmony at each of these levels. So the program of action to ensure continuity of happiness is to understand the harmony and to live in harmony at each of these levels. This was the third important point we had made. And then we had said that we will explore into each one of these, right? Into the harmony in this individual, harmony in family, harmony in society, and harmony in nature. So what we now intend to do is to start talking about harmony in individual, harmony in human being. That is what we want to do now. So let me begin with this. Let me start with this. Trying to understand the harmony in individual, harmony in human being. So if I look at the human being, I can see that human being is the coexistence of self, I and the body. And if I want to look at it in more detail, I can see If I look at it in terms of the need, the need of the self is identified as happiness. The need of the body is identified as physical facility. example, if you look at the cell, there is a need like respect, 
If you look at the body, there are knees like food. You can ask yourself whether the food is required or not required. Is required. Respect is required, not required. Yes. So both are required. Food is also required. Right? Food is also need for you. And respect is also a need for you. But interestingly, if you look at these two types of need, there are different types of need. Their type is very different. And what is the difference between the two? If you look at in time, the need or respect is continuous in time. The need for food is temporary in time. So food is required as and when you feel hungry. Eh? When your stomach is full, the food is not required. So this need for food is temporary in nature when you look at it with respect to time. But the need of respect, the need of happiness is continuous in time. Right? If you try to make this continuous, you will have problems. <coughs> I have already taken the example, right? If somebody makes you eat continuously, you will have problems. Right? If there is a discontinuity in respect, you will have problems. Right? If somebody is respecting you, and he does not. Yeah, for example, in relationship, okay, what is naturally acceptable to you? The feeling of respect or disrespect? Respect. And this is required, you know, or you want to ensure this with continuity or temporarily. We will define this respect, you know, I mean, more detail when we are talking about this harmony in family, the relationship. But I just wanted you to, uh, you know, start, you know, kind of evaluating it on the basis of whatever you consider as respect today. Respect or trust. <laughs> so, respect or trust or affection or love, right? All these feelings, which are in the forms of feeling in relationship, you would like to have the continuity of it or you want it temporarily. The trust, the respect, the affection, the love, all this you want continuity or you think you should have it for some time like food and then <laughs> not have it, you know, in continuity. With this, you don't want continuity. You want to eat food when and as and when you know there is a need for nurturing the body. Whenever you are feeling hungry, so you don't want continuity here. What about this? In terms of feeling of respect, feeling of trust, feeling of affection, you want continuity there or discontinuity? <laughs> yes. If you are talking about the respect of the self, that becomes legitimate. Not the subject. But the eye of the self on its side. If you talk about the subject, then the respect and then the happiness. 
Yeah, so you would like to have the continuity of it?